Hello, welcome to Science for Free channel, and this is Muhammad Ali. Today, we will continue studying the Einstein's photoelectric equation, but experimentally. As we know, Einstein's photoelectric equation predicted that there is a direct proportionality or linear dependence of the kinetic energy of the released photoelectrons upon the frequency of the incident photons. This setup will be used experimentally to confirm this postulation. The setup consists of two metal plates. One is the cathode and the other is the anode. The cathode releases electrons upon impinging of high frequency light on it. By high frequency light I mean gamma rays, x-rays or even ultraviolet. This is because these kinds of rays usually have enough energy for the electrons to be liberated from the cathode. In addition to a meter and battery as a source of the electromotive force. Now, let's study this experiment by, at the beginning, turning the battery off and starting to embed a high frequency light on the cathode. Then, photoelectrons will be emitted from the cathode through the vacuum tube towards the anode and then towards the wiring in this direction. This will cause deflection of the emitter in this direction. Now, if we turn the battery on and starting to increase its voltage gradually, the battery current will be through the wiring in this direction. This will in turn cause reverse of the deflection of the emitter to this direction. This means that at a certain point the current released from the battery will equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the photoelectric current. This means that at that point the deflection of the emitter will be exactly at zero point. At this point we can say that the voltage of the battery which is called in this state the stopping potential or the stopping voltage. This is because this voltage causes stopping the photoelectric current. At this point, we can say that the kinetic energy of the photoelectric current is directly proportional to the stopping potential. The constant here is, for sure, the electric charge. I mean, the kinetic energy will equal the electron charge times the stopping potential, V0. So, what can you expect if we change the frequency of the incident light. I mean, if we increase the frequency of the incident light. About increasing the frequency of the incident light, the Einstein's photoelectric equation tells us that the corresponding kinetic energy of the released electrons will be increased. This is because the work function of the metal or the cathode is a constant. We can now increase the frequency of the incident light and determine the corresponding kinetic energy of the released electrons through this equation. So we can now fill this table frequency and the corresponding kinetic energy putting many values of the frequency and the corresponding values of kinetic energy, we can plot the graph that we have studied in the previous video. In this graph, we can plot this line and determine the work function of this metal and also from the stop, as we mentioned in the last video, we can determine the Planck's constant, which can be used also as a direct confirmation of this relationship. If we find that 
the values of the frequency and the corresponding kinetic energy fitted to this straight line in this case we can surely say that the kinetic energy of the released photoelectrons is directly proportional or linearly dependent upon the frequency of the incident photons and in this case we can surely say that this very simple experimental setup can be used as a direct confirmation of the Einstein's photoelectric equation and more generally as a direct confirmation of the quantum nature of the light. In the next video, we will consider some very important notes in this experiment and we will proceed through some very important applications of the quantum nature of the light and the photoelectric effect in our daily life. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.